Hi everyone, now it's finally time for me to make a video with my entire collection of fragrances. And uh, since I started to collect perfumes and fragrances like two years ago, I've uh, been collecting quite a lot of stuff. So I'm not going to review all of them, but I'm going to show them all. And uh, then I might say a few words about some of them. And uh, I'm going to show you all my full-sized bottles and also my miniature bottles. But I'm not going to show you all the decants and samples because I don't think that's quite as interesting. And uh, yeah, so I think I'll start with uh, all the fragrances I have from Dior, which is one of my favorite uh, designer brands. So let's start off with the Dior Homme, and this one, as you can see, is the silver pipe in it, and that's the first edition before the rep reformulation. So this bottle is from 2005, and then I also got the edition from 2010. Where you can see this one still has the silver pipe in it. And then I've got a bottle from 2012, which is the current reformulation. And then it got black, the pipe in it. I think uh, the differences is not huge between them, but I still like the first editions before the reform before the reformulation. Uh, I think it uh, projects better on the skin and it smells a little nicer. It's not as uh, uh, sharp as the newest edition, but it's not a huge difference. So I like all of them. And then we have uh, the Intense version, the Orum Intense, which is my favorite of the line from Dior Arm. This one is darker and deeper and uh, more yummy. Uh, yeah, love this one. And then we have the Dior Arm Sport, which is the like summery version of Dior Arm. Then let's go to Fahrenheit. And this is the Parfum version. Uh, which is the newest edition of Fahrenheit and I don't have the other editions but I am in love with this one it has a lot of violet in it and leather and it's so how should I say it, it uh, radiates a lot when you get hot so it's a perfect scent I think, and um, yeah, love this one, Fahrenheit from Dior. And then let's go to the Escal Aparati. Don't know if I don't know if I pronounce it correctly, but this one is a very like green and almost soapy scent, and I love this one as well. Mm. And uh, then let's go to the Miss Dior Cherie. This is the one from 2005. It's the first edition of Miss Dior Cherie. Before they changed the bottle and the scent, uh, in the newer reformulations, they took away the salty caramel and. Oh, sorry. They took away the salty popcorn and uh, I don't think the wild strawberry is prominent in the newer editions uh, and as you can see this one is the bottle where the text is written on the bottle in silver yeah, really beautiful and then I also have a mini of that one of the same scent from 2005 and then let's go to their private collection La Collection Privé. Uh, let's start with uh, Bois de Charm, I think you say. Let's see if I can see the text somewhere there. 
this one has a lot of myrrh and oh it's so yummy mm, I quite often wear this at work because it lasts all day long and it's a really beautiful scent and uh, yeah love this one and then I also got the vetiver from their private collection and Vetiver is one of my favorite fragrance notes. I've got a lot of Vetiver scents, as you will see in this video. And uh, I can without a doubt say that this one is my all time favorite Vetiver. It's just perfect. It lasts all day long on the skin and it's not too earthy and it's not too like summery and uh, fresh or it's like a really beautiful dressed up whatever and you can also wear it casually you don't have to be dressed up and yeah perfect whatever fragrance too bad they discontinued it a while ago so that's why I got this huge bottle of it so I will have <laughs> enough of it and then I also get a mini of the Grand V or how you pronounce it, not good at French. And this one is very hmm, green scent. I haven't worn this a lot. Of, I just tried it once or twice, so I can't say a lot of it. And now let's go to the Guerlain. And I have the Limon Verde from the Aqua Allegoria line. I've got the vetiver, of course, but this one is not my favorite vetiver. I like it, but it's, I don't wear it as much. It's really nice. Um, the long ideal. Habit Rouge, the Eau de Parfum, Lidge or Linstant de Guerlain Pour Homme Eau Extreme, the EDP Eau de Parfum, and uh, then I've got Chalimar. Also, of the perfume, and I've also got a little miniature of this one. Same scent, and then we get to one of the most amazing rose fragrances I've ever smelled. It's the rose barbar. Absolutely gorgeous scent. Mm, it's so deep and uh, and the rose in this one is amazing. I don't know how to describe it, but it's ooh. oh, it's gorgeous and so beautiful and uh, definitely unisex. This one is one of uh, my favorites in my entire collection. I get a lot of favorites, but this one is in the top. And then to my precious little gem, my little favorite, the Voldemort, the pure perfume. It's, I guess it, this must be the most expensive uh, juice I've got in my collection, but it's definitely worth the price. It's so beautiful and so luxurious and uh, mm. as you can see I've decanted and sold like two thirds of the bottle because it was too pricey to buy all of it 
all of it just for myself. <laughs> and now the sun got got away. <laughs> so the light changed a lot, but yeah. So Voldemi, so beautiful, and I also love the bottle. And uh, Voldemi means like night flight. And it's named after a book. I haven't read it, but yeah, Night Flight. So beautiful. Serge Letans, Lord of the Loom. Serge Letans, La Fille de Berlin. Annie Cotal, Ode Adrienne. And Annie Cotal, Nintrio Mio. A really beautiful fig scent with a lot of herbs in it. Mm, it's so like milky fig scented, and and I also love these square bottles. They also come in uh, bottles with this shape, but I think these square bottles are more beautiful. Uh, it's the same scent in both of them, but mm, gorgeous. If you haven't tried it, try it. Aqua Orient from Funky Narpels. Sadly, this was only uh, like one shot or what they call it when they just uh, make it once and then then discontinue it directly. Um, ooh, it's it smells like. Like uh, an uh, ice cream that's a lot of pear and uh, honeysuckle, and it's ooh, so 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 gorgeous. Yves Saint Laurent Long. This was actually one of my first fragrances, just before I started collecting. <laughs> the time when I had like four fragrances, now I have hundreds. But yeah, La Nuit de Long. This one has an a really beautiful cardamom in it, and uh, I think this one is my favorite from their long collection of fragrances. And then we also have the Le Parfum edition of uh, La Nuit de Lame. But I don't like this one quite as much as the regular one. I mean, it's nice, but I still think the La Nuit de Lame is better. Vanille Mocha from Comptoir Sud Pacific. And then let's get back to Yves Saint Laurent. This one is the M7. So, sadly it got discontinued but then a while ago they brought it back again and called it M7 Oud Absolu. I love this new bottle but I think it was a little bit better before the reformulation and uh, yeah, it's almost the same scent, but this one is a little, little bit better. Amen Pure Energy from Thierry Muguet. Angel Le Parfum de Cuir, or The Fragrances of Leather, from, also from Thierry Muguet. And I love this bottle. And this scent is like... It's like the regular angel with all the red berries and patchouli, the dark patchouli, and uh, yeah, all like the regular angel but uh, amped up with a lot of leather, a kind of a soft, luxurious leather, not that dark, animalistic, like uh, dirty leather, but this is like. Yeah, like the luxurious kind of soft leather. Love this one. Midnight in Paris from Fanclifenor Pels. 
and this is the Odisolet, the EDT version. Now let's go to this beauty. It's the Boadiris. Boadiris. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce it. The Boadiris. And this one is actually kind of similar to the Dior Boadarsham that I showed you. Um, but I think this one is, uh, is a bit softer and uh, focuses more on the iris while the the Dior is a bit uh, darker and uh, more uh, more towards the mer. So kind of similar, but I actually don't know which one I prefer over the other one because I love both of them. So at days when I want a little bit more iris and a little bit softer scent then I take this one and on the days when I want a bit more oomph and uh, yeah I, then I take the Bois d'Aljean from Dior but both of them are amazing and then I have a little miniature of the Cologne from Thierry Maglay really nice soapy clean scent I saw somewhere that someone said that this one was one of the dirtiest, sexiest scents ever. And I actually don't know where he gets dirty and sexy from, because I only think this one is like, yeah, freshly clean, soapy, really beautiful. One of my favorite soapy scents, but I don't get the dirtiness from it, but really nice fragrance. Red from Hugo Boss. This one is uh, a favorite in the summer. It has a lot of rhubarb, and I love, love, love rhubarb. Really nice and fresh, and uh, I also used to wear this when I go to bed. So, from Hugo Boss kind of like this bottle and this one is also one of the first fragrances that I bought and then a fragrance that I used to wear every single day for a few years uh, before I got into this beautiful world of fragrances and it's the Le Mal from Chambre Gaultier a lot of guys love this one and uh, it's I guess it's like the one of the most popular fragrances ever. Uh, I guess most of you have smelled this and it's nice. I haven't worn it in like over a year I think. But it will always be close to my heart since it was my all time favorite before I got into this hobby. Fleur de Mal from Jean Paul Gaultier. This I actually think this one is kind of strange to have in the uh, like regular perfume shops and stores because it's so different from all the other male fragrances. I don't think you should uh, gender. I, I don't think you should sort fragrances after gender because how do you put a gender on a fragrance? It's like saying that men can't eat strawberries or women can't eat anything with black pepper in it or that men can't wear pink shirts and women can't wear blue shirts yeah so stupid but uh, this one is actually really really floral and when I used to work in a perfume shop and I show this to and then I show this for the customers <laughs> A lot of them asked, is this really a fragrance for men? It smells like it should be in the women's section. And yeah, it's marketed towards men, and I don't care if it's men or women, but it's really, really beautiful floral, fla floral fragrance. And then let's go to my two absolute first fragrances. I got them from my mom sometime when I was like 
10 to 12 years, somewhere there. Both of them are from Yvershea. The first one is Antarctic. This one is like uh, a typical uh, aftershave scent. Uh, it's really adult and mature. Uh, but I connected to childhood since I used to wear it at school discos when I was like 10 years old. And then I mixed it with the Tom Planete, or how you say it, also from Iversia. This one is nowhere to be found anymore. They discontinued it. And uh, funnily enough, I emailed their customer support and asked about it, and they had never heard of it. Uh, I know it's not a fake, because I remember when my mom ordered it from, the, from them to me, and uh, I googled it and found almost nothing. I found some pictures of it, and I found uh, someone that wanted to buy a bottle of it a couple of years ago, but that was, that was all I found. But then I found someone who knew something about it, and he said that it was like child perfumes, and that it was one for boys and one for girls, and this one is the one for boys. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm glad to know a little bit more about it. And if you know anything more, just please uh, write in the comments, because I want to know more about this one, since they don't know anything about it at Ivershia. And I also went to their store here in Gothenburg in Sweden and uh, they actually thought it was a fake because they, they were like, oh I had never seen that one before and I don't think it's from us and when I told them that my mom got it when I was 10 then I don't think they believed me but yeah this one also is like childhood to me. Ooh, it's so dear to my heart, and uh, it's a very, very soapy fragrance, very clean. I I can understand that it's for children, and uh, it actually says that it's no alcohol in it. And yeah, it's like soapy, clean. Yeah, love this one. It's so dear to me, Monsieur Balmain from uh, Balmain. It's a really nice citrus, like lemon fragrance, but it's green at the same time, so it's like green citrus, and uh, really like it. Carbone from Balmain. This one, to me, smells like a dressed up fragrance, and uh, Finally, I gave 10 milliliters of this, I decanted it and gave to my dad, and he loved it immediately. And uh, this Christmas, when they were here, he actually got to refill his decant because he loved it so much. Ramon Monigal, and this one is the Impossible Iris. And this is one of my favorite iris scents. Kind of ex expensive, so as you can see, I've decanted and sold a lot of it. Because I don't need full sized bottles when I have this many. I will never be able to use all of it anyway. And if I should use it up, then I can just buy a new one and decant some of it again. So this is. This is like a. Uh, very luxurious iris scent. It's not as cold as many iris scents it is. And uh, yeah, it uh, radiates a lot, so a little goes a long way. I used to spray like on my neck and on my arms, and then it lasts for all day long. If I get warm, then it just amps up and get more oomph, and it's yeah, beautiful, beautiful iris scent. Kirel, Kirel, or how you say it, also from Ramon Monegal. And this one is like a leathery kind of scent. It doesn't smell like actual leather, but it smells like 
leathery, leather like, and this one also is very, very beautiful. Funnily enough, I wore this when I went to a friend's house, and the first thing she said when she hugged me was, Oh, you smell so expensive, uh, what is it you're wearing? And, and uh, you should also go and check out her channel, Viola Killer Colors. I will put a link to it in the description. And uh, actually, it was her perfume collection videos that made me want to do a perfume perfume collection video with all of my fragrances. And uh, yeah, love this one, Burberry Brit Summer Edition for men. And this one actually is the only bottle that I have a backup backup bottle of, because. It was a summer edition, so they don't make it anymore. And I absolutely love it. It's one of my favorite summer fragrances. The Burberry Brit Red, which is like one of the most yummy fragrances ever. This one is also sadly discontinued. And uh, this one smells like a rhubarb pie. Like a rhubarb pie with lots and lots of vanilla sauce on it mm. and uh, I actually blind bought this one I found it online and uh, the store only had one bottle left so I clicked buy immediately because <laughs> I uh, saw the review of it in uh, Viola again <laughs> Viola's video with her perfume collection and she described it as uh, as a rhubarb pie with with lots of vanilla and uh, like the crust of the rhubarb pie and I agree with every word she says about it and it's it's so insanely tasty mm, love this one the first minutes it's like like a lot of lots and lots and lots of vanilla and it's really heavy um, that's not my favorite favorite part of it, but when uh, the like rhubarb pie crust thingy gets through that thick wall of vanilla, then it gets so amazing. I'm actually in love with this bottle. The silk jasmine from uh, Hugo Boss, and this is from their collection, their like luxurious collection. Really like these bottles, and I when I first sniffed them, I didn't think it was Boss. I thought it was. I thought Boss only made the the like cheaper fragrances that's in their regular collections. The quality is really nice in this one. I love that like the jasmine scent that it's it's so big and it's all. Oh, mm. Love this one. You should, if you haven't tried their collection fragrances, you should do that. And I also bought both the Damask Oud at the same time, which is a really dark, uh, really dark, really masculine oud scent. A shower fresh for men from Clean. And this one actually has a really beautiful lemon scent in the top note. It's like you like squeeze the lemon over your skin, but that part sadly goes away very very quickly, and then it turns into like a newly showered uh, fresh scent. I wish that the lemon would stay on longer, but it's it's quite nice fragrance. Vanille Noir from Ivoshia from the Secret Essences. Secret Dessins, I don't know. The, it's the Eau de Parfum version. And uh, this one is not like a sickly sweet uh, vanilla ice cream scent. This one is like. This one is like pure vanilla. Like the vanilla sticks, or what it's called in English. Um, Mm, it really smells like genuine pure vanilla. Really nice fragrance. Sycamore from Chanel. <laughs> Another very fragrance in my collection. And uh, this one 
I haven't worn this much. This much I've decanted and sold a lot of it, but I've worn it a lot as well. But not this much. And this one is like more oomph than the the order I showed you. This one is a bit more. Uh, don't know how to explain it. Um, it's a bit uh, deeper. <laughs> Funny story. Uh, I'm working as a train conductor on, uh, here in Sweden, and uh, one day we had uh, four persons that smoked weed in the train. That's not legal here in Sweden. And uh, before that time, I didn't knew how I didn't know how weed smelled like, but I heard some that some people said that this one smells like weed. And uh, now I can confirm it, cause that smell that was in the train, the whole train smelled like weed after that. So I had to open all the windows and like air out it, air it out in the middle of the night. Uh, yeah, so I can agree this one smells like weed. But it's a really nice green vetiver scent from Chanel Sycamore and I also have the little miniature of it so cute one of the most beautiful cutest bottles it's the Freak from La Masca and I love the little snail that crawls on the bottle you can see that here this one uh, contains a lot of poisonous flowers, uh, white flowers, and it's actually quite interesting scent because it's both floral and uh, beautiful, and at the same time it has something dark and like not rotten leaves, but something in like that direction. I guess it's one of the poisonous flowers that's in it that smells like that, because I don't know how any of the flowers in this one smells. But it's really beautiful. It has uh, something that says that it could be a male fragrance, and it has something that says it could be a woman's fragrance. And uh, yeah, it's really, really unisex and such a cool fragrance. Freak Scarab. And this one has a little sca golden scarab on it instead of a snail. And this one actually is more honeysuckle. It's still very floral and um, I think it's plum in it as well. Yeah, it contains like plum and jasmine and blood orange and uh, like poisonous flowers and uh, honeysuckle and really beautiful. Not as typical unisex as the first, uh, the last one, the freak, but I think this one is gorgeous as well. And I really, really love honeysuckle because it smells like childhood to me and. Uh, yeah, so this one is really, really beautiful. A little mini of the ecstatic from uh, Bonin. And then we get to uh, my collection of Kylie Minogue fragrances. She is my huge, huge idol and I really love her. Um, a few years ago I bought the Inverse for Men that she released. That's the only fragrance she released towards men and uh, I've actually worn, run out of uh, I think it, this is my third bottle and now I can't find it anymore I, I think it's discontinued this is the fragrance that I get the most compliments when I'm wearing out of all of my fragrances and uh, yeah I'm so sad it got discontinued I really really love it and then I felt like I had to buy all of her other fragrances because I yeah because I love her so much and I just wanted to have them I don't wear them a lot I tried all of them 
once or twice, but yeah, uh, I have almost all of them because there were two of them that I can't find anymore. So let's start with Darling, which is Kylie Minogue's first fragrance. And then, we have, then I have the Dazzling Darling. And the Sexy Darling. She also released a Sweet Darling. And if I remember it correctly, then uh, that one is my favorite out of the Darlings. But I can't find it anymore. Uh, I rem remember that I bought it for my mom for Christmas one year. The year that it got released. And uh, she loved it. And I actually asked her a while ago if she had any of it left. But sadly, she worn out of the bubble. She also has quite a lot of fragrances, not as much as this. I think she has like 20 or 30 fragrances or something like that. And uh, that is one of the few bubbles that she has worn all of it from. So it's really, really beautiful. And then we have the Showtime. And this one is the EDG, I think. Yes, this is the EDG, the toilet, and there is also an EDP version, but I can't find it. I think it's discontinued. And then we have the Couture, Couture, Couture. Love the bottle. Music box. Kind of like the bottle, but I hate the cork thingy. It's plastic and the sprayer is also plastic so it looks really cheap <coughs> hard to close as well and then we have the pink sparkle which should contain like pink champagne and it's kind of sparkly so yeah and then um, there also is the pink sparkle pop. And I don't understand why they insist on having like plastic sprayers on these. Because I think the sprays make them look really tacky. Otherwise the bottles are kind of beautiful. But yeah. That was my Kylie Minogue collection of fragrances. I have this beautiful little box from Mono di Oreo, and uh, I bought it used, so I don't have all of the fragrances. But the ones that I have is Andre Amber, which I also have the big bottle of, and Betty Bear. And this Vetiver is like a more earthy Vetiver than the other ones I have. And then we have Creed, Creed, like, which is a like crazy leather scent. It's like a leather couch. It's very, very dark. It's like a old leather couch. It's yeah, it's like really in your face. It's screaming leather, leather. And then we have her oud fragrance, which is really, really amazing. And rose etoile de Hollande. The Oud Stars from Sergeoff. I bought a little discovery box with all six fragrances from that line, which is Safar. And that's <laughs> this must be the craziest scent I've ever smelled. It in the beginning it smells like Worst shit. It smells like uh, yeah, it's really really crazy. I don't like at 
I actually hate the opening on this one, but the one time I actually got past that initial manure scent, then it turned into a, a woody scent, and uh, that one was actually quite nice, but I really, really hate that opening. And then we have Mamluk, which is my favorite out of these six bottles. This one is like an insanely, insanely tasty uh, honey scent. It, uh, I guess it's like a love or hate fragrance. Some people get uh, the tasty, tasty honey scent, which is out of this world. It's Oh, it's so, it's so creamy. I guess it's the wood that makes it so creamy and thick and uh, like almost not milky, but like that kind of thickness. And uh, uh, some people think it smells like urine on their skin, like a dirty bathroom, on <laughs> like a pub public restroom, and. I don't get that at all on my skin, but uh, I actually can understand how it can turn into that like urine scent because honey can do that. If it goes wrong with your skin, then it's not good. But if it goes well on your skin, then it's like the most tasty fragrance ever. So beautiful. I wish I had a whole bottle of it, but actually my boyfriend hates it so I don't wear it as often as I would like and then we have Gao Alcat which is also one of my favorites from this box Fars also favorite and then the last one is Naja I just dropped drop this bottle, but uh, luckily enough it didn't break because this is also one of my favorite fragrances in my collection. It's Maremma from Tiziano Terenzi. And I've uh, talked a little bit about this one and uh, a lot of other Tiziano Terenzi stuff in one of my other videos when I got the most generous gift ever from Paolo Terenzi which is the nose behind all the fragrances from Tiziana Trenzi. Uh, on my birthday he sent me a huge box with like scented candles and this bottle uh, and uh, like a scented stone and oh, lots and lots and lots of beautiful stuff. And um, this one, Maremma, is like if you have tried uh, Black Orchid from Tom Ford. Uh, it's it's like Black Orchid, but this one is more exciting. It's uh, deeper and it evolves more on the skin. And uh, oh, it's so tasty! It's uh, uh, oh, it's so it's so delicious. And uh, oh. But don't overspray it, because I did that once wh when I got on the bus to the store, uh, <laughs> and uh, I felt like I smelled a bit too much. But if you don't over overspray it, then it's a gorgeous fragrance. Mm, I can sniff this all day long, I have to stop now. Bocanera from Orto Parisi. It's like a dry and peppery chocolate bar, like a really, really dark, dark chocolate, like cocoa powder, dark. Mm. And this one is also a fragrance that I can't spray too much because then it's just it gets too much, especially if you're indoors. I wore this one to work one day, and I wore too much of it. And uh, inside a train that you can't get out with too much, then not a good idea. Ginepro di Saldegna from uh, Aqua di Palma's Blue Mediterraneo line. 
Mediterranean and this one is uh, a really nice summer fragrance I'm longing for the spring and summer to get here now so I can start using these scents more I mean I can wear them in winter time as well but uh, during the winter I mostly go for the like heavier scents or the sweeter scents and uh, this one is really really fresh and it has those I think it's herbs yeah, it's both fresh and a bit peppery and it has a lot of juniper mm. really like this one Puma Green mm, it's really light, fresh, perfect for night time when I go to bed now it's time for yet another Vediver scent it's Vediverio from uh, Diptyk a really nice green Vediver and such, such a beautiful bottle I love these clean square thick glass bottles so gorgeous and the Versace Pour Homme Oud Noir so I, I really really love this bottle it's so beautiful and I actually went to the store and bought this the, I think it was the same day as it got released here in Sweden and it's such a nice light and easy oud scent it's like uh, a perfect oud for the mass market and but it's it doesn't feel like a scent that everyone wears because it's the oud makes it so kind of luxurious but it's as I said a light oud kind of light kind of spicy uh, and some people I know this one doesn't last as long on the skin on some people and the first time I used it I actually thought it disappeared after a couple of hours but I think that was because I smelled it all the time so I got used to it but uh, all the other times I've used it it lasted for a work day so I used to work wear it as I used to wear this at work and yeah I'm really happy with it guess what it's another vetiver it's the vetiver fatale from Atelier Cologne and this one is I think this is the most summery vetiver that, that I own it's a little bit fresher than the other ones and yeah perfect summertime vetiver and when I bought that one I also got a 30 milliliter bottle for free with my purchase and then I chose the rose anonym it's just a gorgeous gorgeous rose fragrance and I also got this letter case for it engra engraved with my name on it Nikla it's such a dark rose uh, and it's the uh, oud and patchouli in it that makes it so dark mm. love it and then let's get to the scent that I use mostly nighttime when I go to bed because it's uh, really oh sorry it's rose ikebana from Hermes from their Hermesens line and uh, it's a really fresh rose and rhubarb scent gorgeous there's such a blue jeans tiny bottle now let's go on to Montau uh, this one is the chocolate greedy and it actually has a perfect name because it's like uh, it smells like a chocolate cake thingy that you just bake you just taken out of the oven mm. and then it uh, turns into uh, like deep voluptuous yummy 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 vanilla scent uh, in the beginning it's mostly chocolate cake thingy 
and then it turns more and more and more into vanilla and at the end it's almost only vanilla and it lasts more than 24 hours on my skin and yeah gorgeous and then I, I also have the intense cafe which is a coffee based fragrance uh, I review this like my first impressions in the first impressions video and then I said that I couldn't sense the coffee I only sense the flowers and uh, yeah uh, but uh, right after I turned that video off I started to sense some coffee and then it got more and more intense so in the beginning it's mostly flowers with a tad tad bit of uh, like mild coffee like coffee with uh, lots of milk in it and then the coffee like breaks through the bouquet of flowers and then it gets more and more coffee uh, and it kind of smells like you're at a, uh, at a really nice cafe with fresh flowers on all the tables and drinking uh, drink, drinking really really good coffee uh, for a while I wore this almost every day for about a month and uh, I really love this one Eau de Voir from Bona Versace Bright Crystal Absolute Optimistic for men from, from uh, Paul Smith Paris Hilton for men Just, Just Cavalli for men from uh, Roberto Cavalli Burberry Brit Rhythm for him from Burberry my very first bottle from uh, Sergio uh, except for the little ones I had in my Oud Stars collection but this is my first full sized bottle and this is the Dama Bianca from the Casa Morati line and it in the beginning it's like a, a heavy flower scent and I at first I thought it was like almost like an old, old lady scent but then uh, when the top notes calm down you can start to sense the ambrette and vanilla that turns it into this oh this like yummy tasty fragrance that uh, lasts all day and mm, I really really love this amber vanilla thing that's going on with the, all the flowers in the background and at first sniff I didn't really like it but then I felt like I had to buy it when I sensed the dry down and uh, I got it on sale so I got a really good price otherwise Sergio's scents are kind of expensive but uh, when I got that price I couldn't refuse it Lily of the Valley from Ivrochia Fresh Rose also from Ivrochia and Purple Lilac Mano Fresh from Versace Jeans Original for him from Replay Oh the Gaga from Lady Gaga. Ed Hardy, I think it's called Men's or For Man. Power from Kenzo. Really nice floral fragrance with a boom. DKNY, Be Delicious Men. Satsuma or Clementine from the Bubble Shop. Really nice Clementine scent, but sadly on my skin it goes away after about one or two hours, so I have to respray it all the time. Dolce Gabbana, the one for men. Nice. Another one from Body Shop, it's the Brussels nut. Really nice, like sugary cookie nut. Thingy, like a sugar cookie with a uh, lots of nuts in it. Oh, ocean, oh, oceane from Biotherm. Uh, Summer by Kenzo. It knows, on 
from uh, Lancome. CK into you, him from Calvin Klein. Clinic Happy for men. Nice citrus fragrance. CK1, one of my first fragrances. Fujiyama from Success to Paris or Success to Paris. Kingdom from Alexander McQueen. And this one must be the most beautiful bottle in my collection, I think. And uh, the fragrance is. I don't know <laughs> what word I you should use for it. It's like uh, you're going into an into a, um, a really really old castle and it's dusty in there and it's flowers and the roses on the tables and it hasn't been open for years and years and uh, it's like closed up and uh, it's like a fairy tale world I've heard that some people think it smells like body odor like sweat and uh, I think that can be the celery seeds but I think it, yeah, don't actually know how to make, mm, explain this so it makes any sense. But really, really cool fragrance and it's discontinued, but I'm so glad I, that I found the bubble. Tease from Paris Hilton. Actually bought it to give us a Christmas gift, but then I decided to give something else. And I bought it on sale, so it was almost free. And I've decanted and given away some of it to friends. Actually, quite nice. Enchanted Forest from uh, the Vagabond Prince. This one actually is one of my all time favorites, but at the same time, my boyfriend hates it. Uh, I remember when I first got it. I. First, I had some. Uh, samples that I won on Fragrantica when they released this scent and I try them like every day and love them I love the Svarta Vindar Svarta Vindar called in English um, Black Current uh, Black Current um, I love the Black Current, black current smell it's both uh, berries and uh, like green bush scent and uh, my boyfriend think it smells like cat pee um, it's a lot of uh, like uh, yeah like the bush scent mixed with uh, the black currant berries and uh, like fur uh, the tree not fur it really smells like you're in a forest picking black currants and the wind uh, Breezes through the bush and all the all the notes like mix together and it, oh it's so I am in love with this one but the first thing my boyfriend said when he got home that day was ew what is it that smells like cat pee and fur and I said that's my new fragrance thank you but I love it. Here is another beautiful bottle. It's the John Galliano. John Galliano. The Eau de mm. It's like uh, lipstick and makeup bags at Moulin Rouge kind of thing. La 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 la. Here's another box with a ton of fragrances in it. It's the Edition de Parfum from Frederick Mal, the collection box with all the 18 fragrances they had back then. All of them. And uh, my favorites right now is Masque de Vachor and uh, Portrait of a Lady. Beautiful, beautiful fragrances. Another Vediverse fragrance in my collection is the Vediver from Etro or Etro or how do you say it? Such a nice Vediver with, with uh, like uh, that uh, salmiac powder thingy going on in it. Mm. I love Vediver.
as you should know by now. And here is my first bubble from Etat Libre de Orange, the Anteros. This one is the absolute best lavender scent I've ever smelled. Uh, I know there are lavender in lots and lots of uh, fragrances, but I've never sensed like the real lavender scent. I've al always like felt like which part of the scent that should smell like lavender, but I didn't think it smelled like the real deal. But in this one, it actually smells like you're picking lavender, like the green scent that you get on your hands from the stalks and from yeah from the flowers and uh, the flowery lavender scent it's so clean and green and oof, so such such a lavender oomph it's insane that I can that they can make a fragrance that actually smells like the real deal. It's one of my best purchases during the year 2014. And I actually bought that one when it was sale, so at the same time I blind bought the Tom of Finland, also from Etat Libre de Orange. And this one is like leathery scent, and I really really like it. Alien of the Parfum from uh, Thierry Muglet. And then I also have the Alien Essence Absolu from Thierry Muglet. It's like the regular alien, but uh, with more like gourmand, caramel type of scent. Really, really tasty. Love both of them, but this one is mm, mm, insane. And here's Angel of the Parfum from Thierry Muglet. This is one I this is one I talked about when I. Uh, showed you the uh, leather version, the leather flanker, and this one smells like red berries, patchouli, cotton candy, chocolate. Yeah, it's a really powerful. Sorry, it's a really powerful and like voluptuous and extreme fragrance, so don't overspray it. And uh, I guess it's a love or hate fragrance. Some people love it, some people hate it. And I can understand both sides because it's so huge, so in your face. But at the same time, it's I love the um, I love the dirty patchouli mixed with all the yumminess from the red berries and the uh, chocolate and the cotton candy and yeah, love my angel. The amber fragrance from Mona Di Oreo that I showed you in the box, love this amber scent. I immediately fell in love with it when I tried the rollerball, like the small bottle that was in the box, so I went and bought a big bubble. See now from Davidoff, and this one is before they reformulated it. I haven't tried the new one, but I've heard that the new one should be like a watered down, uh, thinner version of this one. This one is really really nice. So Elixir Purple from Ivoshe. Come on Evidence Bomb from Ivoshe. Royal Rose Oud from uh, M. Kayet. Really nice uh, rose oud fragrance. And then to my final bottle in my collection, the very last bottle. La Vierge de Terre from Serge Lutens. I've wanted a bell jar from them for such such a long time. And then uh, a friend of mine wanted to sell her bottle, so I bought it immediately. Without even having tried the scent. But it's a really, really nice scent. And yeah, so that was my entire perfume collection. And as I said in the beginning, 
I didn't talk a lot of all the fragrances, but if there is any of the fragrances that you want to hear me talk more about and like make a proper review, then just tell me in the comments and I will see what I can do. And uh, I'm really going to try to make more videos. I've been really bad at that, but now I've finally made this video that I've been wanting to do for such a long time, but I have never come around to do it because I have so many bubbles. So I thought it would take like the whole day. It took a few hours, but yeah, this was my collection. I hope, hope you liked it. Thank you so much for watching and uh, take care. Bye.